it, it is an overreach. And first of all, I mean, from the, you know, some, assuming monopoly is something that's been going on in a whole bunch of discussions here, but we don't want to talk about that primarily. I don't want to talk about, about that primarily today. Um, we're operating in a context here after the 2016 elections where platforms were misused by foreign intelligence agencies and a number of others um, to spread uh, illicit and, and false material. Um, and, and, you know, uh, what they've been doing is wargaming for quite some time, the different scenarios that would come up. And this is one that would come up. Uh, now, Twitter's policy on, you know, dissemination of hacked material um, came into play, and it may have been a, an overreach to block the URL in its entirety, but Facebook is fully within its rights and, and the way that it's wargamed these scenarios before to say, wait a minute, um, we've got to check the, the facts underlying this, restrict distribution in the meantime, uh, allowing it to be spread still, uh, you know, that the intentionally spread on the platform is perfectly allowed, linked to it is perfectly allowed, but to say that, that the, the normal mechanisms that would kick in um, don't apply at this point because we just don't know if this is true or not. Um, we'll, we'll see what, what comes out of those fact checks. And, and I think that this is a responsible way to avoid being misused um, uh, for these platforms. But Chris, I, I feel like there's an added issue here. There's one thing when social media platforms decide to put a warning next to a post by an individual, but they always campaign to say that they are not a publisher and, and therefore don't face the same levels of restrictions of, and, and, uh, and regulation as a publisher. So should they be able to then make a judgment on a post by a publisher who does face those regulations and restrictions? This is a newspaper article. You, you can argue it, that it's a paper, newspaper from one side or the other, but it is a credible journalistic uh, organization. I mean, it, is it a is journalistic there... organization? Um, and we, well, it remains to be seen whether the, what's put in those articles were facts. And that's what's being checked right now. So the, the spread of that information was not blocked by Facebook. And I actually think that that's the right call. I don't think that you should block these things. But sort of the, the, the promotion and distribution that, uh, that the news feed actually amplifies has been restricted until the fact checks come back. And we'll see the way that they come back. And so there may be labeling, there may be some further restriction. And that's an entirely appropriate um, action 19 days before an election when uh, you know, material of, of questionable validity um, comes even through a major media outlet. But again, to that point, it, it, it's a popular mainstream newspaper here. It's not, it's not the Holocaust denials, which, which Facebook finally decided to ban after more than a decade of letting that garbage out on, on the platform. It just feels like, Chris, no matter what they do in trying to crack down on misinformation and disinformation, it's going to be problematic. Is that wrong? Uh, there's always going to be a challenge, and there's always going to be a, a process of, of kind of working the refs on this um, from both sides. And, and Facebook sees it from both sides, believe me. Um, it has over the years, and it will continue to. But you know, the company tries to play it down the middle as much as it can to set rules up. And, and Twitter tries to play it down the middle as much as they can, too. And, and saying that their hacked policy actually blocked the sharing of the URL was, I think, a, a little bit more aggressive than, than I think most platforms should be. But again, those decisions are actually protected not by Section 230 in the way that most um, you know, commentators indicate, but, but actually by the First Amendment. Um, this is something where these platforms have their own speech rights in terms of how they express themselves. And, and so the, the, this often gets you know, cast in this debate of it's, a, it's an online platform that's spreading this information versus a publisher, where the, the nuances are actually much greater than that. Um, you, you can be one in one context and one in another. Um, we'll see how this works out from a regulatory perspective. I, I, I don't know if you've seen, I assume you've seen today that, that the FCC is going to try to weigh in on this with the rulemaking, which I think will be a great place to discuss all of the different permutations of the way that this can be handled in the future. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.